Um, thanks very much for your time, Larry. Larry Ayers is uh, a colleague from the uh, National Electrical Code Committee. Actually, Larry, you're on uh, several committees, are you not? Three or four? That's correct, Mike. I'm on the uh, NEC uh, Correlating Committee. I'm on NFPA, which is basically the Electrical Safety in the Workplace, and also a member of Code Panel 13, which basically deals with generators, batteries, and things of that nature. Okay, so Larry is going, has uh, given us his time and he's going to uh, represent what he presented to the 2017 code committees. Uh, as very often, well, many of us come out of those committee meetings very energized about what's possible. And uh, I don't know anybody uh, who, who doesn't uh, think uh, when, they, when, they, when, they, when the last proposal gets voted on, what are we going to do for 2020? So that's what uh, Larry, the gist of it. Uh, we're all code geeks. Uh, we love what we do. And Larry has a, a rather disruptive uh, uh, proposal here, and uh, it, it'll mean many things to many industries. So I'm going to let him speak from his passion and his heart here. Larry, it's your airplane. Thanks, Mike. Uh, what I did here, uh, I, I, I produced this PowerPoint uh, presentation for Code Panel 2, which deals with the table for uh, Table 220.12, which deals with the lighting allowances for various occupancies. And one of the things I did was I went back and I researched uh, a lot of the codes and, and the uh, background information that's uh, publicly available on the NFPA website. And uh, if you look back here, uh, back in 1959, was the first time that the NEC put in a lighting allowance compared to size um, uh, occupancy. And so that was at five watts per square foot. And that remained in the code for almost 30 years. And what you'll see in 1984, uh, I think it was 1981 or 1984, uh, in that code, that was reduced down to 3.5 watts per square foot. And what happened, you'll see on the next couple slides. So this one here is is what they did back in 1984. Uh, some gentleman put together a table showing that uh, the number of two by fours that were installed in a building. And if you can see this column A here, uh, about the seventh or eighth column over, this basically said if you look at the top one, there's approximately 1,126 fixtures in this building. And if you go over here, this is 64 uh, square feet per fixture. And bottom line is this building has a total lighting uh, connected load of 3.125 watts per square foot. So after you add all these buildings up and you take an average, you come up to 2.75 watts per square foot that were installed in these buildings. And I think what the committee did was they took the highest one here that they saw out of these various buildings and said, okay, 3.23 watts per square foot. And they said, okay, they reduced the lighting allowance from 5 down to 3.5. Yeah, I think when I look back the history of this in 19, could you go back to the first slide again? What year was that? Right, I think the utility companies were still giving out free incandescent light bulbs in 1959 in order to drive up uh, electrical load, if I'm not mistaken. There was always a conception or an idea that the American economy would be growing 5 to 10 percent a year at that time, and it actually probably did, or pretty close to at least 5 percent. So uh, this, you know, your first line there uh, is, is, is an era in which the incandescent lamp was the was the uh, major uh, uh, load in uh, for electric utilities. Yeah, and it's amazing how far we've come uh, since back then and the amount of reductions in new technologies we have uh, to even get this down significantly. Yep. So we go on here, and then I start talking uh, during this presentation about what, what's happened since 1980s, what, what has happened since we went down to 3.5 watts per square foot. And, 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 and in the early 1980s, uh, the Illuminating Engineering Society uh, published recommended foot candle levels for offices. And during that time, we were around 70 to 90 foot candles. And if you look to today's levels in the same publications, we have gone down to 30 to 50 foot candles. So that's a drastic change. It's the way we um, work today, the way we work in offices, and we, the way we use computers um, and uh, compared to writing as we used to do. Uh, the other thing that's happened is we have such new technologies where we went from the T12 to the T8 to the T5, and now we've gone to 
to an amps. So where the old fixtures, the 2x4s, were typically spaced at 64 square foot, uh, one fixture for every 64 square feet, we are now starting to spread these out on 8x10 foot centers, 10x10 10 10 foot centers, and we went from the old four lamp fixture now to possibly two lamps to do reduce energy and reduce foot candle level. This next slide I put in here was uh, to show that the Illuminating Engineering Society had dropped these here, the, the highlighted part in yellow. Um, those are show that the in office areas, we are now down to 30 to 50 foot candles. And I also put together a slide here for the committee. And the next thing I talked about was that some of the historical uh, fixture wattages. When we started out in the 80s, of the 1980s with the F40 T12, we were at 196 watts per fixture. And that almost equates to what the gentleman did uh, back in 1981. Uh, his counts were based upon 200 watts per fixture. And so we have slowly over the years, uh, from the T12 to the T8 to the F32 T8, um, and all, all the way down to LED fixtures, whether they're f equivalent four lamp LEDs or equivalent two lamp LEDs, we're down to almost 47 watts per fixture, which equates out to 0.58 watts. Uh, per square foot. So it was time, uh, you know, we, 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 we've gone another 30 years, and so it's time that Table 220.12 started to evolve and started to change. I also put this thing in here for the committee to see that HVAC systems as well, those things have gone from packaged rooftop units to new variable refrigerant flow systems and ground source heat pumps, and those two are at down to significantly low levels for watts per square foot. I also put before the committee that energy codes nowadays, if you really look at the energy codes, there's very few of these that are above one watt per square foot. So we looked at this and said, okay, you know, I think there's room to move. There's room to try to get some of the fat out of that table. Yeah, uh, Larry, if you could go back to that slide about the HVAC, uh, it's just one up above. Uh, you're yeah, right there. So I think I just want to clarify that uh, you were adding this to make a general point about uh, low density in buildings, but that's actually a different table uh, in the code. Uh, where that's you're... correct. I was just trying to uh, indicate to the to the code making panel too that if you take maybe equivalent LEDs at at 0.58 watts per square foot, and you took a very efficient HVAC system at maybe 2.7 or 3.0 watts per square foot and maybe you took some plug load at 0.5 watts per square foot, you really end up with a system that's the in total building load is four watts per square foot. And that's far below what the NEC calculates. And so that was my overall point. Yeah, yeah, so when we approach this, when we start writing it, we would probably use this information to support, uh, oh, you know, you, you talked earlier about possibly another, another uh, uh, table and I'm, I'm I'm thinking here that so we've got our we've got our lighting table and it may well be that you've got the makings of of a proposal right here. Right. So yeah, this was just the initial start to try to get people moving and get people talking and see what the consensus of the panel was. Yeah. Okay. So we went on and I I wanted to make sure that I, I put in front of the committee because uh, you'll see my proposal here shortly was the fact that the energy codes. Um, are, are heavily adopted throughout the United States, um, while some use the IECC, uh, the International Energy Code, and some people use ASHRAE. I wanted to kind of say that even though some people might use the 2007 version uh, or the 2010 version or the 2013, um, they are broadly used throughout the country. And I also, on the next slide, I wanted to kind of focus here on the bottom uh, line, which is really office buildings. And I wanted to kind of say that if you look from 2004 onward, the energy codes, both ASHRAE and to some extent the IECC, have been at one watt per square foot or less. So it's I didn't want to come across saying that this change that we're making would only uh, change just for the 2013 version, but I wanted to say for people that are using older energy codes, this is still applicable. 
And I also gave them kind of a uh, – to show them, I, I took one of those comm check forms that people fill out that they give to AHJs. I, I took this comm check and, and, and put it up on the screen so people say, hey, you know, here's my energy code at 0 0.90 watts per square foot that is uh, allowed under an energy code with the square foot area and say, okay, this is what I'm, I have to meet, this 3,000 watts, and look, I'm beating this pretty significantly and with my different wattage of fixtures. So I wanted to kind of give a, a feel to the people in the committee on how this is done. And then what I kind of tried to uh, also put together was the fact that the end here, I, I took these various occupancies that are in, in Kentucky and New Jersey and Ohio, Indiana, and I, I took these and I took the square footage of these and said, okay, um, some of these are actually older buildings. There's a, the, the ones in red are actually older buildings and the ones in, in black are actually newer buildings that have been built within the last uh, year, year and a half. And I kind of wanted to show that the how um, how much extra capacity we had in these systems compared to the calculated National Electric Code load, uh, which is the far right column, the KW per or the watts per square foot, and the actual uh, I guess you'd say third column over from the right, the demand. And so uh, I know when I first started in the industry in the uh, late 1980s, early 1990s. Uh, everybody was kind of taught through the IEEE color books, through the, the, the gray book, which dealt with commercial occupancies, that typical demand for a building was 8 watts per square foot. And now, um, over the last 25 so years, we have got that demand down to 3.5 to 6 watts per square foot. And the one that was actually 6.2 watts per square foot on this slide, uh, the second row of the office building, that's really an all-electric building. And so, um, we've made great strides. Uh, we've come down. And so I, I think I wanted to show that there's enough room in here to move the lighting allowances down. And so the last part here was our... Oh, uh, oh, one, one thing uh, about that is that it's not widely understood that in the higher education area, most of the square footage nets out as office building or what we call commercial. Uh, it's a little bit troublesome to a lot of people th who think that uh, the square footage in higher education ought, ought not to be uh, classified by the building codes as commercial space, but but it actually is. Uh, it's only in the schools, the K-12 schools, uh, you know, below uh, higher ed, uh, where we articulate a completely different uh, occupancy class. And even then, schools have all, all sorts of mixed occupancies in them. But I, I mention that only anecdotally because this is important for the education facilities industry, particularly higher education, because basically most all the square footage in higher education is offices. That startles many people. Go ahead, Larry. And I, Yeah, I think that's very interesting, and I think that's – that can be used possibly to maybe, you know, maybe down the road, maybe create a second category for offices maybe un under universities. And so um, so I, I took this proposal, um, and I originally had – my original wording was on top. Um, I had an exception there. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. The exception was where a building is entirely an office or a bank, and the lighting is designed to construct to comply with an energy code adopted by the local AHJ with a lighting density of less than 1.2 volt amperes per square foot. That's basically saying if we have an energy code less than that, we can reduce the lighting load for uh, banks and office buildings by one watt per square foot. Now, when I did that, um, I started to think about that. There's, there's a lot of buildings out there, for instance, maybe a high-rise type building uh, or even even a, 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 a low-rise building where you might have a couple levels of garage and underneath, and so or you might have a uh, a retail building or something that has an office in one side, maybe a warehouse in another, and so the original wording would preclude you be, from using those um, that reduction in those buildings, and so I changed it around, and the the, the panel agreed with me. Uh, so the exception would read where a building is designed and constructed to comply with an energy code adopted by the local authority with an overall lighting density of less than 1.2 volt amperes per square foot. The unit lighting loads in table 220.12 for office and bank type areas within that building 
shall be permitted to be reduced by one volt ampere per square meter. So that was the change that got passed. Uh, I know that several individuals came up to me afterwards and said, okay, why didn't we just change the table and reduce it? Um, but this was a proposal up there, and I think there's room to move it in the future for the next code cycle. And uh, those are some of the things that I like to work on, um, maybe with the healthcare care industry and some other things to try to get that down. Perfect. This is what we needed, uh, Larry. And I'm grateful to see this uh, taking flight the, w the way it is. Uh, a couple observations um, is that it's not just energy conservation here. Uh, when we when we, when we do this, uh, we're, we're taking uh, we're, we're, we're taking a fair amount of the uh, incident energy out of uh, certainly at the service, but uh, where we have lighting transformers downstream, um, we're also getting those transformers. So, so like we like to say that a uh, 300 kVA lighting transformer. Uh, could likely be cut in half, and that that's a big deal in terms of safety. And that was uh, one of the other uh, one of, one of the other factors that we used in the previous cycles to get these down. Uh, but this is the most organized and uh, solid way of doing it that I've seen to date. And I, I'll credit to the IEC. I should mention that you're the independent electrical contractors because uh, we we also have other uh, relationships with the actual the Geneva IEC. So the safety part really is conforms to the uh, NFPA mission and probably explains why uh, NFPA has been slow to track the uh, energy codes. So with this change and the one that I hope we can help you with and I, we're preparing this video clip for the education facilities industry so they can start uh, uh, turning over data or submitting data uh, over the next two years, say, uh, to help Larry build his case. Is there anything yeah. else, Larry, that I can uh, do for you? Did you did you feel like you had more time here to speak than you probably were allowed to during the uh, during your code presentation in San Diego? Yeah, I think uh, you know it's funny. I, you know, typically you only get ten minutes of time, so you you know you really kind of try to have to hone in your points and get that through in ten minutes. And so, um, so I, that's why I try to whittle this down to, uh, you know, 10 to 12 slides to kind of make through, I move through it and made my case. Was there anything you want to say here that they wouldn't let you say over there? <laughs> no, no. I think uh, I'm just fortunate to be able to do this. I know that uh, uh, I know I've worked with a couple individuals on the panel to try to get this through, and um, I think this is a good thing for industry. And uh, it's a, a, a long-awaited change. It's a huge, it's, it's, it's a huge change. And so, what uh, I guess what I'd like to do is close this call out, and uh, we'll probably follow up on this. We still have yet to vote on this, of course, both you and I. And uh, I'd like to be able to return the favor wherever I can. Uh, if I've ever, do you have anything in front of Code Panel One, Larry? Uh, no, I do not. No, okay. no, not this time. Probably Dave does. I'm working with Dave. Dave and I are of like mind on 110.16. Um, is it 110.16? Yeah, on the on the incident energy labeling, but that's a, that's a separate video recording. So for the moment, um, for my colleagues in the education industry, I'm going to close this out, and we will uh, put this up on our uh, on our website for all to view and understand. Thanks, Mike. Okay, uh, I'm going to.